made it. Another country. No, it's not warm. Got a jumper on. A Mexican jumper on. There we go. Cool. Sort of like the First Nations sort of thing, I wouldn't. Oh yeah, look. Totem poles down there. <laughs> what are you doing, you crazy woman? <laughs> no, don't pull it over. Here we go. Okay. There's a big hole in the road. Good <laughs> luck, we're back in Mexico. <laughs> We've uh, just come for a walk. We're like three blocks away. Three blocks away from our hotel, which is the Ramada downtown. And already we're in Gastown, which is pretty cool. And this is the only steam powered clock in the world, I believe, uh, in Gastown. It's actually steam powered. I think it goes up every 15 minutes and then on the hour it does something quite um, spectacular. So you'll have to come back again another time when it's um, close to the hour. It's obviously a very popular part of the Vancouver downtown tourist attractions. So there's lots of people here taking photos like we are. <laughs> Anything? Anything? Steam coming out sort of a bit, feels a bit warmer. <laughs> oh yeah, a little bit. Although it was cold, it, Vancouver's really lovely just to take a wander around the streets. We went searching for Gassy Jack. The Gastown neighbourhood in Vancouver is named after Gassy Jack. Here is Gassy Jack. Not only was uh, Gassy Jack a seaman, a steamboat captain, he was also a businessman and arrived in Vancouver, or in this area it was called Luck Lucky, in 1867 and opened the first saloon in the area. The statue is located in the area where the saloon was erected. Um, he's named Gassy Jack not because uh, he was a father, but because he was a talker and he was known for his flair for storytelling. The statue is located in Maple Tree Square in Gastown. It's a really pretty spot, uh, lots of uh, autumn leaves and interesting buildings. Puppy, quick, there's a puppy. Close to the Gassy Jack area is Chinatown, so we wandered down there to have a look. East Hastings Street is on the other side of Chinatown and it's a little bit seedy and not really recommended to wander down there as a tourist. Autumn's here. Uh, fall. Well that's autumn. So it's really just, are falling. He's just added another colour of Whatever I don't care. <laughs> It's he officially cold. fucking cold. He cold. It's officially cold. What do you got on there? Jumper. Green jumper. Maroon hat. Grey scarf. <laughs> it's not a fashion thing. <laughs> we headed a few blocks south to um, take in some street art. Until we visited Vancouver, we didn't know that um, Vancouver was originally called Granville and it was uh, renamed back in 1886 to Vancouver. 40% of Vancouver's total population is made up of immigrants and the city has the highest proportion of Asians per capita of any North American city. What? I'm colourful. Autumn colours? Yeah. And then you just add the red nose and it's cold <laughs> and it's all good. And can you breathe steam? in the uh, Granville markets. Being still cold. Look at this. The nice thing is it's an indoor market. Oh, so cheese. nice and warm. Bacon. Yum. 
done. We haven't had lunch and it's about 3 o'clock. Chocolates. While we were in Vancouver, we purchased a two day hop on and hop off bus ticket. Oh my god. And part of that, or one of the stops is Granville Island and the markets. The area was originally a mud flat and it was dredged and by 1916 the, the mud flat became a man-made island. Oh my god! It was the home to warehouses and mills and factories at the time. It was a little bit seedy after a while, um, but back in um, the late or oh, late seventies, early eighties, the government um, earmarked it and put some money towards it, and the markets were one of the things that came out of the uh, redevelopment of the area. They were really amazing for food, etc. We did have lunch here, um, and I would recommend a visit if you are coming to Vancouver. <laughs> what you get? <laughs> Got a real country style sausage roll from a real Cornish lady. <laughs> she bought like this, like really with a funny accent. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just really enjoying nice. a sitting out on the river. Well, they call it a creek, don't they? False creek. False creek. Look at the size of these seagulls. They can't be seagulls, but. Like what would a seagull. I think it is a seagull. It's, it's massive. Mm. Included in our hop on and hop off bus ticket was uh, a couple of rides in the ferry which we took up False Creek to uh, Creekside Park. Travelling up False Creek in the ferry gave us a different view of the city. And it's, um, as tourists, you know how sore your feet get, so it was a great way to um, just relax for five, ten minutes. We went past BC Place. It's a multi-purpose stadium and was the first covered stadium in Canada. It served as the main stadium for the 2010 Winter Olympics. And, and you can see from this side, uh, we've got the science building which was part of the expo 86 i think this whole area actually that we're standing in at the moment on the water is all part of expo 86 and it's really turned out to be a magnificent day it's really it's very cold. it's cold it's cold but you know it's not freezing but it is cold um yeah it's we've been very lucky no. <laughs> Here we are in fall. It's, uh, it's a season that's really beautiful to see, but we haven't seen it very often. You don't see it really in Brisbane, in Queensland, because it's too hot. We certainly haven't really seen it in Mexico, so it's something a little unique. <laughs> it's nice. This is one of the many sculptures that are in uh, downtown Vancouver. Apparently it's called Trans Am Totem Pole because the car that's on the very top is a Trans Am. Uh, but I'm going to rename it the Seagull Shit Totem because the Seagull Shit's definitely on top of the Trans Am. <laughs> Usually when we're in a new city, we try and do a walking tour. But the time of year, there wasn't that many walking tours on offer. 
but we did find a really unique uh, tour and it was from a company called the Forbidden Vancouver Tour and the tour we did was called The Lost Souls of Gastown. We met up here with our um, tour guide or more of a storyteller and her name was Janet Glassford. Well yes occasionally I might have kept a fellow company on a cold lonely night. What up? Girls like me we kept that town alive. Supposing it was you sir. Grubbing for gold 16 hours a day all manner of weather. Oh. Well I'm certain after a day like that why you'd appreciate a little charming company shall we say. Uh, and no one here blame you a bit for long. Us girls stuck together. Mother-in-law, dog. We stepped inside a world of murder, revenge and true grit and it was a dramatisation of history of uh, the Victorian gas town. Stories of deadly fires and smallpox. Um, and at one stage we were in an alleyway and we actually saw little saw some rats running around so that wasn't set up but uh, oh my goodness it was um, added to the whole story. They'd be having a great old time on their breaks for the logging camps and the mills where, admittedly, not just work, but life was hard. This was no place to raise a child. Gosh, we had a body house long before we ever had a schoolhouse. And I hear that, and it breaks my heart. And for those of you that are lucky enough to live here, why apparently people get lonely here in Vancouver. And if that ever happens to you, I certainly suggest any time of the day and night, you come down here to the steam park with truly there's probably someone waiting here to take a photograph of it at, at, on the hour. Introduce yourself, you can go for a coffee, go for a beer. This is a fascinating story, masterfully told. <laughs> <laughs> she did an excellent job on the tour. So we're out on day two of our Vancouver tour. As you can see, today it's a bit more of the weather that I'd expected. So yesterday we were really lucky, it was a beautiful blue sky day in the end. Today, a bit overcast, but it is very nice. Oh, Jeanette's found a laneway of some sort for some reason. Oh, to play hopscotch, yay! <laughs> Who remembers this? Hopscotch. There is the observation, like you know, the sky, whatever it's called. Oh, uh, yeah, the building right up. Yeah. Up there it is. The uh, North, we're in Canada Place in Vancouver, and the North Pole is. 4,565 kilometres away. <laughs> oh, another choice. <laughs> Honolulu! 4,357 kilometres away. Which one would you choose? <laughs> I'm going to choose Honolulu. <laughs> this is uh, Vancouver's answer to the Sydney Harbour. Uh, not Sydney Harbour. This is Vancouver's <laughs> answer to the Opera House, apparently. Only in one we were told that it, you know, if you go down to the port and uh, have a look, you'll see it sort of looks like the Opera House. I guess it sails. I'm not sure what the Opera House was actually designed to look like, but yeah, this is the, uh, the cruise ship terminal. The majority of the cruise ships departing from this terminal are heading to Alaska. The next stop is Capilano Suspension Bridge. If you head down to Canada Place, there's a free shuttle that goes out there. We're here in uh, Capilano Suspension Bridge. Welcome to Capilano Suspension Bridge Park, you guys. Um, my name is Casey. I'm going to be with you guys for roughly the next 25 minutes. Um, this is just 
just like a short little history tour we do. We're uh, just going to teach you a little bit about the uh, history of uh, the bridge itself, uh, about the park and the First Nations people uh, from this area. Now, every pole in our park here are authentic First Nations poles. They were carved by actual First Nations people, and they were raised here on the property with their permission, right? Pole well, here's called a welcoming pole. So uh, if you guys flew into Vancouver Airport, you probably saw one of these at the airport, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's also one of these in Stanley Park as well. So this large figure on the bottom here is called Sky Brother. And notice how he's got his arms out like that. So whenever you see one of these poles in this area, it means exactly that. It means welcome, come on in, right? Next, have some food, right? What's that? His face doesn't tell us that. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> Could be this one. Yeah. That's um, no. <laughs> oh, really arky. It's a big curve down. Swing. Huh? Well, it is a suspension bridge. It should be fine. It was built, only built 50 years ago. It's only built 50 years ago, babe. <laughs> hey? 1956, wasn't it? Yeah, 1956. It's 2019 now. Yeah. That's true. It's 60 <laughs> years ago. 60-something years ago. Yes? This bit's wobbly, look. Uh, I'm standing still. I am standing still, so as you can see, the bridge is actually moving quite a lot because uh, I'm doing it now. It does actually move quite a bit. But apparently, a 40 ton western cedar fell on it uh, about 10 years ago and it broke the tree, and the bridge remained intact. So, yeah, well, I think we'd be fine. Not sure if you can see, but in the trees here, it's probably easier to see this tree. There's uh, lights that go all the way up and then all through the back here along the walkways, tree walkways, and up the other trees. Australian guy that we uh, just quickly spoke to on the bridge, Capilano Bridge walking across, said that there's uh, a total of three million light globes that would be put up in the park. Wow, it's really well done. See all the lights. Lights up in the trees. Hey squirrel. It's a baby. Little baby squirrel down there. It. it wants to get a good <laughs> selfie. <laughs> smaller, some, some smaller suspension bridges up in the treetops. And I think they said seven suspension bridges. <laughs> like it's not a sunny day but it's actually worked out well for the lights because you've got this real dapple light of the forest and then uh, all the little millions of Christmas light fairy lights so it's only it's not even midday yet but they're having a nice effect in the forest more fun walks in the park on the cantilevered bridge. Mm. I thought it was a glass bottom thing. <laughs> it's just as good though. Very pretty forest. Douglas firs, I believe. Christmas tree. Christmas tree. Yeah. Some very clever lighting and uh, stuff that they've done here. So this is just lighting. Lots of hula hoops. Hula hoops of, hula hoops of light. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Aussie hey. Travellers again from uh, Capilano Park in Vancouver. Uh, 
it is our second day in Vancouver and uh, we didn't think we were going to come here but because when it's advertised it sort of says you know Catalano Park Bridge. Yeah, suspension it doesn't, bridge. Suspension bridge, you know, and it's like $60 or something and you think, ah, oh, just a bridge. Expensive. It's expensive. But then um, we saw some other stuff that talked about the suspension bridge and then um, treetop walk and a cliff face walk and uh, as it turns out it's been a fantastic yeah. few hours. I think we've been here for probably two or three hours now. It's worth the visit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's really lovely. And you can get a free shuttle bus from Canada Place, Canada Place which is it takes you up here, then you can get your tickets when you come up here, so you can make your decision really if you don't want to spend the $60 to come in. Um, we also did the free um, history tour as well, so when you first come in they give you about a 20 minute tour, and that was really interesting, yeah. really interesting, and the guide was great. Um, and there's another tour which we didn't do, which was the botanical Nature and nature, nature so yeah. flora and fauna. Yeah, yeah. we didn't do that. Yeah. Um, it was, there was quite a few people doing that tour, yeah. so we didn't bother with that one. No. But um, we got no time for that. We got no time for that. <laughs> well, Alrighty, that's us. We're gonna head to Stanley Park now. Yeah, because we haven't done enough walking. Yeah, bye. Well, Lee can't open enough. <laughs> just uh, been in Capilano Forest and now we're coming for a walk into Stanley Park and the weather gods have been kind to us again look at the sky it's cleared up and it's become a really beautiful day considering this is part of the wet season or the start of the wet season and uh, I believe it rains a lot here in Vancouver so thank you where they got. Here's the view of the city from the, the river walk or the sea wall or whatever they call it, view of downtown Vancouver. When the sun comes out and the sky is blue, you can understand why it may be voted one of the most livable cities in the world. Not sure how often that happens though. <laughs> There's 405 hectares of public park here and it's popular for bushbuck riding, just walking. It's a great spot to take a picnic lunch and enjoy the views in the gardens. The Hop On and Hop Off bus has a handful of stops throughout the park as well so you can take your choice as to where you want to hop off and hop back on. On the northern side of Stanley Park is a life-size bronze statue and it's called Girl in a Wetsuit. It represents Vancouver's dependence on the sea and the necessity to use the sea for the benefit of all. We are in Stanley Park at the area called the Totem Poles. Totem Poles of the First Nations people which are um, very important in Canada. Apparently the First Nations people never seceded the land, so they never basically left the land and the foreigners, Europeans, etc., that came in, that just settled or came for a visit and never left, um, really have no claim to the land. So First Nations people still pretty much primarily own the land. But the totem poles are a very interesting part of their culture. And uh, when we were at Capilano, the guide said that there's actually quite a strong relationship between the totem poles and the art here. And also uh, the New Zealand Maori art as well. They think at some stage they must have met and uh, shared some culture together. This 
just a short visit to Vancouver, but we thoroughly enjoyed it. And I would love to come back in the summer to see Vancouver in a different season. Next stop, Vancouver Island. It's a pretty time of year. Fall. Now I know why they call it fall. Because well, the leaves fall. Well, I always thought it was fall because that's when the snow falled. Oh, <laughs> that's winter. <laughs> yeah, but I thought, I didn't know they had winter. I thought Americans just had fall. <laughs> I didn't know they had, I thought fall was because the snow falls. Oh. Yeah. Well, it does fall. Yeah, well, it does, yeah. It's yeah. about the leaves. Yeah. Here's a t-shirt for you, Johnny. 